What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the Stacks at Bay and the Numbers and today we're taking a look at another electric vehicle company because apparently these are the types of companies that people love and we're looking today at Mullen Automotive, ticker symbol M-U-L-N. Now right now the stock closed at 68 cents a share and in my opinion I do think it's going to pull back here in the short term. We might potentially see a little bit of a rally and a little bit of a U-turn uh, in the next couple of months but after that, I do think it is going to continue to sell off, and we'll look at why. So, here you can see a relatively flat MACD, not much action going on here. We do have an RSI of below 32. RSI stands for our Relative Strength Index, and a lot of people use this as uh, an excellent indicator as to whether a stock is overbought or oversold. And usually you, the benchmarks you look for is if it's below 30, a lot of people say it's oversold. And if it's above 70, a lot of people say it's overbought and it's time for the stock to start pulling back and selling off a little bit. So here, you know, you got a relatively low RSI, so we could potentially see a U-turn here in the short term. Um, if we switch over here to the weekly, you can see obviously had a big drop and it has been bouncing around uh, on the weekly the MACD is slowly rising and we have an RSI of below 34 so again you know there are a few indicators and metrics here that are showing us that we could potentially see a little bit of a short-term rebound we switch over here to trading view and you can see this was basically a symmetrical triangle this is a one-year chart by the way we have like a symmetrical triangle that was starting out it was bouncing around tightening and then it broke down and started to head lower and here it closed at a little below 68 cents a share one thing that caught my attention was the low that it made back here this is february 24th and you can see a low of 52 cents and look at that it is a fib level at 52 cents so in my opinion they might potentially bounce this around and bring it back down to this 52 cents there's your uh, technical pattern that'll be your double bottom which will be bullish and then you will see a little bit of a rise, a little bit of momentum. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that, just in my opinion, is what I think is going to happen over the course of the next couple of weeks or potentially even the next couple of months. Now, I know they're talking about uh, unveiling, well, not really unveiling, but like showing off and doing their, their little tour with uh, one of their new vehicles that they've been talking about. And it just makes me laugh, right? Because this article, Investor Place, came out yesterday, right? And it tells all oh, dear Mullen stockholders, you know, get ready for an October launch. And supposedly, you know, we are thrilled to launch the first fully functional demonstrator five EV crossover vehicles this October, right? So that's why they're saying that, you know, just hold on, position yourself here, you know, wait, wait for this announcement here in October, let them show off the vehicle and, you know, you're going to start seeing some volume, some positivity come into the stock price. And, you know, you could potentially make a few dollars here. All right. That's fine. Uh, the stock really didn't move. Said it was up 2%. Mullen stock isn't seeing much activity on today's news. It could happen when the launch happens. All right. So that's one positive uh, piece of information to keep in mind. However, it just made me laugh because seven days prior to that, Investor Place... This is uh, someone different who wrote this article, right? But from the same source. And apparently he is saying that it will not be around by 2024. At the time, it was 91 cents when he wrote the article. Now we're down below 68 cents. But if we come down here to what he says about Mullen, you know, a couple of things caught my eye here. First of all, it states that uh, the in-house EV battery isn't very impressive. And, of course, more importantly, the Chinese company with which Mullen created the battery <clears throat> has gone out of business. So, you know, that's obviously really not a good sign. But it also states that Mullen does not intend to start delivering its EVs until 2025, right? Now, keep that in mind, 2025, so that's at least two and a half years from today's date. So if this stock does nothing but sit sideways or go down for the next two and a half years, it is 110% justified right? You can't just have companies explode because you own them and because you want them to. I mean, listen, I wish it worked like that. You know, I really do. But at the end of the day, it doesn't, 
right? Because it's the actual business. It is the actual revenue and the earnings and the popularity of a product or a service that is what drives a stock higher and higher, right? You look at a company like Microsoft, probably one of the most rock solid stocks out there. Um, you know, they're, they're in a very unique niche market there, right? Because they have Microsoft Windows and, you know, they just pump out a new uh, operating system every year. And then what happens when the new Windows comes out? Well, everyone with a, you know, personal home computer has to upgrade to the new Windows. Everyone who works in an office building with all those computers, they have to buy, you know, a bunch of new versions of the new Windows to put on their computers now to keep them up to date. So, you know, on top of that, they consistently beat earnings and on both sides, you know, the top and the bottom on revenue and on EPS. So, you know, there, there's multiple factors as to why a company like that consistently goes higher, basically no matter what the heck is going on. But you switch back to a company like Mullen, who's not doing any business and potentially isn't going to start producing for the next two to three years. And yeah, you can have something that can get ugly very quickly and technically doesn't have to find a bottom and really start to rally up for at least the next 18 to 24 months. And I know that this is just one random article. Obviously, they say one thing a week later. They contrast it with a complete opposite type of article. Totally understandable. But if we switch over here, this is the Mullen website. Right, So if we go to the Mullen website, we scroll down to manufacturing and we click on more information, they talk about them wanting to be you know, a full domestic North American company. Okay, that's great. That's awesome. Right, Look at the size of this facility here. Boom. Very nice. Inside. Very nice. And right here, these are their words. Okay, These are their words. Mullen is currently working on creating the, ne the necessary infrastructure and the required machinery to support large-scale electric vehicle production, which will begin in Q3 of 2024, right? So the company is telling you that they are going to be like in full-scale production to really start pumping out their vehicles towards the end, mid, mid to end of 2024, so they, the company, says 2024, the article said 2025. But let's go with this time frame, 2024. That means you have about two years before this company is going to be in full-scale production to where they're really going to be pumping out these vehicles and you're going to potentially start you know, seeing them on the roads and people are really going to be jumping into place orders for, for these EVs. So that's why I, you know, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of things because right now, I mean, they're showing a market cap of $324 million, we'll call it. And in my opinion, that's really not too crazy, right? Because if you have a startup company, you know, if you have a facility and you have some ideas, you have some IP, some patents on the back burner, right? To tell me that like a startup like this is worth a couple of hundred million or a billion is kind of realistic, Right, that that's not too overinflated. However, they have been beating up the stock, and again, as I mentioned, this bottom here at 52 cents at this fib, and we are in this downtrend, so we could potentially see a pullback to 52 cents before we get a double bottom and a bounce. But if we're looking six, nine, twelve months from today, there's really nothing stopping this stock from dropping. Uh, below 50 cents into the 40s and potentially even the 30s. Now, I know if we drop into the 30s, we'll be cutting the market cap in half, so we'll call it about 160 million, which um, might be close to the book value of the stock. So, you know, again, is it extreme? Yes. Um, you know, should it happen? Uh, I mean, I don't know if it should happen, but it might happen. Right, because you're going to have a company here with the stock that is basically just going to be put on everyone's watch list and thrown on everyone's back burner, and everyone's going to be waiting a minimum of 12 to 18 months from today before they take a position. Reason being is because they don't have to take a position today. Right? There's there's nothing really forcing me to take a position today. Now, listen, we might turn around five years from now, and it'll be you know twenty five dollars a share, and you're going to wish you got in here 
at 68 cents. Totally understandable. But what I'm saying is when you're positioning yourself long term, it is all about pricing and timing. This is what I spoke about when I spoke about PSNY, right? It, it uh, IPO'd, that SPAC merger came out $10 a share. I thought it was a little overvalued initially. A lot of people jumped in the comments section, started bashing me. You know, now the stock has slowly started to pull back. And that's my point. I'm not here patting myself on the back. I'm not trying to indicate, you know, I'm better than you guys. You have to listen to me. That, that That's not the point I'm trying to make here. The point I'm trying to make here is why force yourself into a stock at $10 a share when you can easily buy it for $8 a share or potentially less. And that's kind of the situation we have here with Mullen. The only difference is, obviously, PSNY has some vehicles on the road, and they're actually generating some revenue. I just felt that, personally, the market cap was a little high. So I just thought that the share price could come back a little bit, and you know, you can get a little bit of a better entry, a little bit of a better fill for yourself long term. But here, a situation like Mullen, like I said, here in the short term, if you want to step in, if they pull it back to this fib here at 52, you get your double bottom. You want to step in and time it, catch a little bounce, and you know potentially a little bit of a, a positive pop there uh, in October when when they do that little uh, car tour or whatever they're doing. Yeah, then I can understand here in the short term, you want to position yourself here, you know, any, any time below 60 cents would be a good entry, you could say, and you can make a couple of bucks here as it runs up back into, you know, the mid 80s or potentially 90 cents a dollar. Definitely understandable. However, if you do see that type of pop with a company that is not looking to be in production for the next two to two and a half years, and you do see a pop like that, in my opinion, I would take the profits, I would take the money and run and and position myself into the company down the road. Because again, buying it here at 67 cents might be phenomenal. If you have enough money where you can just piece into stocks, tuck them away for years, and you don't care what happens in the short term, God bless you. Unfortunately, about 9 out of 10 of the people who are investing and are trading probably don't have that luxury. So my basic overall point here is that why buy a stock here at 67 cents when we could potentially get involved at under 50 cents, right? And God forbid, I know a lot of people are involved in this company and, and I'm not wishing, you know, any negativity on you, but let's say it does pull back to this bottom fib here at 32 cents. Now it's at 67 cents, right? So if you bought it today and we turn around six months from today and it's at 32 cents, you are down 50% Right, You could have bought even more if you just waited and you were just a little bit more patient, tried to get a, a little bit of a better fill. And now, right from this level, you need over a 100% move to get back to break even. So you're really going to need that stock to start hustling and bustling. And that's basically what I'm saying. You know, again, if you're already in the stock, you know, I'm sure you've been taking it on the chin. You're looking at those red numbers. And again, if we pull back to about this 50 cent level, in my opinion, probably nothing wrong in the long term to add to that position. However, if you're a new investor and you've been watching Mullen waiting for a good price to enter, again, in the short term, I would say you could probably wait for this 52 cent uh, entry here at this FIB and catch this double bottom. In the long term, again, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the FIBs. Keep an eye on these moving averages because, again, it looks relatively weak. As you see, anytime it does pop above the moving average, you know, in the short term, within no time, it does reject and start to pull back. So, you know, uh, it might be a, a, a good long-term buy here at 67, but to reiterate again, it could be an even better buy down here at 40, 45, or 50 cents. Right. So just keep that in mind. And I wanted to show you guys what I saw on their website as well. So you don't think I'm just, you know, pulling these uh, time frames, you know, out of the air and bashing, you know, these EV companies, because this one, no matter what you tell me, this is a speculative roll of the dice play. And if you cannot afford that type of long term exposure risk, in my opinion, you should not buy it just because it's a cheap EV stock doesn't mean it's worth your attention right? So I'll end it there. Once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave it down in the comments section below. I'm usually very quick to reply. Uh, just like everyone on YouTube says, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the algorithm, helps me bring a few new eyes here into the channel so they can see what I'm doing. And also, 
if you do appreciate the content I'm putting out and, and you like my videos, please do me a favor, push that subscribe button. Personally, obviously, it means a lot to me, you know, just to see the support from you guys and build up a little bit of a community here so we can really start to, you know, go a little bit more in depth and have some intense back and forths here every time I put out a video uh, on a new stock, even if we're updating an old stock that we already looked at, right? So we'll leave it there. And like I always say, I do know that the markets are rocky, the markets are uncertain, the markets are volatile. So I do wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.